There are a ton of different sensors that robots use to detect the world around them. But for robots that move around, one of the most difficult tasks is to keep track of all the objects that are around them while also keeping track of their own position. This process is called Simultaneous Location and Mapping, or SLAM. Fortunately, we have a sensor technology that is perfectly built for this task. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In this video, we're going to dive into LiDAR. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging, and it's the technology that is found in self-driving cars, drones, and even some consumer robot vacuums. LiDAR sensors have even been attached to airplanes to do geological surveys and mapping the rainforests. Even though professional LiDAR can be really expensive, there are hobby-level devices like this that make it really accessible. By the end of this video, we're going to understand how this technology works and how you can use it in your projects. It's actually really similar to how radar works, but instead of sending out radio waves and waiting for them to bounce back, it sends out light signals. Let me show you what I mean with a little example. I'm going to stand right in the middle of my workshop here, and I'm going to emit a laser beam until it hits something and reflects back. Because I have a smart processor on board, I can measure that and it is 1.67 meters away. But just shooting out one little laser beam and waiting for it to come back only gives us one data point. If we wanna map the world around us, we need to have that laser beam spinning around. So I'm gonna spin around in a circle and keep taking measurements until I've collected all the points around me in a 360 degree circle. The more measurements I take as I spin around in a circle, the higher the resolution of my image will be. So that's why most LiDAR devices have a spinning component. Those light pulses are constantly being measured as the device spins around, and that's what gives you the full 360 degree picture of your surroundings. If you've done any robotics at all, you're probably familiar with these sensors. I've got an ultrasonic sensor here and an optical reflective sensor. So what's the difference between these and LiDAR? This ultrasonic sensor works very similarly. It sends out ultrasonic sound waves and it detects the reflections. You can get pretty accurate distance measurements with an ultrasonic sensor, but they have some downsides. They don't work very well in noisy environments, and you also don't get very good resolution. Plus, if you want to get a sense of your entire surroundings, you'd have to put this on a spinning platform. It's the same story with these optical reflective sensors. These send pulses of IR light and measure the reflections. But with these sensors, you can't even measure distance. Essentially, the only thing you can do with these is detect whether or not something is present. This optical reflective sensor can really only sense out to about five centimeters. This ultrasonic sensor can't even measure anything closer than 30 centimeters. On the other hand, this LiDAR device can measure up to 12 meters, and it measures up to 8,000 samples per second. So for applications that need a detailed view of the surroundings, LiDAR really is the best sensor technology. There are a lot of different hobby level LiDAR sensors out there, but the one I'm gonna be using in this video is the RP LiDAR A1M8. You can purchase this device on DigiKey and it's great for starting out. The first thing I notice here is just a regular DC motor. The motor uses a rubber band and pulleys to spin the sensor around. If you look closely here, we have a little laser module embedded here, and then on the other side, we have the optical sensor that measures the reflections. The cool thing about this device is that it doesn't use a slip ring to transfer the power and communication to the sensor module. It actually uses wireless communication so that the unit can last much longer. If it used a slip ring, it would wear out so much quicker than using a wireless protocol. There are two connectors on the bottom. One is for UART serial communication, and the other one is for motor control. So let me go ahead and plug in the included cable. Before I attach this LiDAR sensor to my computer, I want to be able to mount it to this stand here. So I designed and I 3D printed this enclosure. The nice thing about this enclosure is that it covers up all of the moving parts and provides a little bit more protection. My hope is that by mounting this LiDAR sensor here on this stand, I'm gonna get a much clearer picture of the walls of my workshop. In preparation for taking measurements with this sensor, I've downloaded and installed SlamTech Robo Studio, which is the manufacturer's demo software. First, I need to go into the LiDAR sensors area, and I need to add a manual connection to this LiDAR sensor by selecting my COM port. Once I hit connect, 
I'm hoping that this starts working. In the center of the display here, it looks like we have a polar coordinate system, which just basically tells us the angle and amplitude, or in this case, distance of our measurements. There's a little play button here. Let's send that command and see what happens. There we go. Do you see that? I've got some red lines here and it looks like I see a 90 degree corner exactly where I would expect here in this corner behind me. So I think the LiDAR sensor is actually working. We're getting good data out of it, which is really exciting. Oh, that's kind of interesting. You can tell that this wall here is very smooth, but the wall adjacent to it has the blue bins and the red bins that kind of give those jagged edges here on the graph. Isn't that cool? Let's see if those lines change as I rotate the sensor. You can see that 90 degree corner adjusting based on where the sensor is. Now let's see what happens if I put something in front of the sensor like my hand. Oh yeah, I can see a tiny little red line there that is my hand moving back and forth. Isn't that cool? Let's see if you can see my body. So I'm gonna stand really close to it and I'm gonna move further back and hopefully there's a little red line there that is moving forward and backward. This demo is super cool and it gets me excited about using this sensor in future projects. Speaking of using this in a project, there are a couple of different options. The website suggests using the software development kit or SDK to use in your projects. But for me and the simple things that I wanna do, I'm gonna to try to read the serial UART information coming out of the controller. You might be thinking that I should just open up the Arduino IDE and use that to talk to this device, but there's a catch. This LiDAR device only responds to hex commands and not ASCII commands. The Arduino IDE can only send ASCII. So I found a serial terminal program that can send hex commands to the device and hopefully once I get it all set up, I can read that measurement data. So the first thing I need to do is to connect to the device using a baud rate of 115200 and mine happens to be COM port 8. Next, I need to send it the start scan command, which is hex A520. So once I send those numbers, I get a response, so that's a good sign. In order to capture the measurement data, I actually need this sensor module to spin around, and the motor control pin for this module is connected to the DTR pin. So in the software, I can actually clear that pin, which sets it to zero, and that turns on the motor. Once I got that motor spinning, it looks like the measurement data started streaming over the COM port, so that looks like I got it working. This is great news because if I want to use this in a project, all I have to do is get my microcontroller to read and parse that data and pull out the angle and the distance measurements. Speaking of upcoming projects, I need to build something with this LiDAR sensor. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, please let me know down in the comments because that's what I'm going to be working on next on the DigiKey channel. Maybe I'll even mount this thing on the XRP platform and do something really cool. Whether you're a hobbyist, a maker, or an engineer, these LiDAR sensors really open up a whole world of possibilities. If you want to try this out for yourself, go check out the product page on the DigiKey website. While you're there, you should explore all the other different types of LiDAR sensors that they have to offer. My name is Zach, and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.